when you have something that high and you're doing things that are right for the tank, I would get another test. Alright guys, back. First things first. Notice, no reflection. Tom Genius, all I had to do was move over slightly and the reflection now doesn't bounce back straight into the camera. New viewers, this is Water Change Wednesday. What I do is I take questions and comments out in the description on the videos and then I answer them there and then I'll answer them here. And I also put some updates on what's going on, things I think are reef worthy. That's all. All right, without further ado, Water Change Wednesday. I stopped by Johnny D's today. He's going to cut all the glass that I need for the Pico. Well, you're probably talking somewhere around maybe, um, I'm going to say about 75, 80 bucks. For he said 75, 80 bucks. That's not bad, guys. If you're a do-it-yourselfer and you want to put things together, I thought he was going to charge me a lot more. And then I'll silicone it and put it in the video. Okay, here we go. I have one. Hikvo. Hey, Tom. I have over 100 parts per million nitrate, but only 0.02 phosphate. How can I reduce this nitrate? I used Red Sea Nopox water changes, but it doesn't seem to work. Hick and I had some correspondence back and forth. When you have something that high and you're doing things that are right for the tank, I would get another test. Maybe the test is off. You have nitrate that high, 100% water change. I know it's a pain, that's why I love nanos, because 100% on a 20 gallon is doable. 20 gallons on a 100 gallon tank is only a 20% water change. That's what I would recommend, large water changes. I think I mentioned that in one of my videos. I'll put it up, uh, where will I put it? I'll put it over here or over here. I would vacuum the sand bed if you have high nitrate or phosphate. He said he also has long hair algae. With hair algae, one of the things that you can do is just get your hand down in there. With this, I was down there with my tweezers almost on a daily basis for a while. It won't get it all off. I mentioned it in one of my other videos, Bad Hair Day, that once the hair algae is picked off with your fingers, the hermits go after it like crazy. I also told him one hermit crab and one astrea snail per gallon. I wanted to show you the progress on the hair algae in the five gallon. Let's check it out. It just really made vast improvements. It's almost completely gone now. In here, there was a lot back in there, back in this spot. It's almost gone. In here, there was a lot. It's almost gone. And back on this side, there was quite a bit. So I'm really happy about that. And it's starting to look like it used to look. I like that. Fish are looking good. Look at them. They think they're going to eat again. Don't you love when you have problems with your tank and you solve it? Broke Reefer Man 45 asked me, do you miss having any medium to large size fish, AKA tangs? And I responded to him 
and said yes, because I love the yellow tang, and I always had a sailfin tang, but you just can't do it in 20 gallons of water, guys. You know, it's not gonna work. I did think of this at one time, when I had some algae at the beginning stages of this tank. It was one of the greens, and I'm not really sure which one it was, I'd have to think back. Anyway, I was gonna get a tang, a medium size, just temporarily put it in there, in the 20, to let them munch out and then take it out. That would be the only way that I would keep any kind of tang, would be just for a temporary cleanup kind of thing. Some people might even not want me to do that. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I did change the way the light is on the HOB. I just didn't like it shining straight in, in the back. So my brother said he's had way better success putting it on the top. So let me show you what I did there real quick. So you can see that's something I've updated. All right, I just turned on the refugium light. So it's starting to pack in pretty well. And I just like this light on top. New viewers, eight inches wide on this. Looks like a lot more, but it's not. Let me put my hand in there, look. Hey, look. That's my hand. I have to say that I really like the addition of this. Let's see what happens. That's a cool shot. Cool. Clown, he just wants to eat. Look at him. If I stick my finger in here, he'll want to eat that. Look at him. Go ahead, munch out on that. Reef Gaming said he just got done with the water change on his 5.5 gallon. And his question is, have I ever had any other lights on my tanks like T5s or anything else? I had mentioned that a long time ago in one of the videos. Way back, I used to have metal halide lights over my large 250 gallon. I believe I had three. They were perfect. And then I put actinic fluorescent blue. I rested them on top of some acrylic cross pieces going across so I would get more blue into there. Something to be said about lanthanum chloride, guys. I put my four drops into the tank. I notice in the morning after, Everything just looks so good. I don't know whether that's it or what's going on, but I'm a firm believer in, you know, doing your maintenance, do what you need to do, water changes, whatever you feel you need to keep your phosphate low. But if you need that little boost every once in a while to drop it down, a few drops of lanthanum, it's never affected anything in my tank. I did that last night and everything looks great. Abdiel asked me what I do with my extra Kenya tree offspring. For a while I was giving him to my brother Carl, um, but what happens now is I have no place to put them. So I'm almost thinking maybe in the Pico, I don't know yet, I'm thinking wouldn't it be kind of cool just to have one type of coral just fill the whole thing? Just to see what it would look like, I don't know. So I'm thinking maybe I start a Kenya tree Pico. Sometimes we have to look at the corals, not always about color and uniqueness. Sometimes a coral in its natural state if there's a lot of them in one area, they can look kind of beautiful. George. George stumbled across one of my first videos. When I look back at those first videos, guys, I go, oh man, was I stiff. Anyway, George asks, how long do I mix my water before a water change? Usually, guys, it's about 24 hours. Saturday morning when I get up, I'll put the salt and the water mixed together, R-O-D-I. I put a air stone down in it and a power head, and I let that go overnight till the following day. So usually 24 hours. All right, guys, what do you think? I think that's enough for today, right? My guess, guys, it was two things. My guess is that the... My guess... My guess is that it was two things. You don't know. You know, it's on. I have it on a fort. I have it on a 14. Bracken says, I don't know why you aren't famous yet. Such good content. Very nice transitions and videos are very cohesive. Not to mention, 
different than most mainstream reef channels, which is very refreshing. A comment like that just got you guys six more months of video.